Greetings, my fellow privateers. Radabon here. Thank you for tuning in to Star Sector Scrappy Privateer. Episode 11, Survey and Slaughter. More magfields? Oh yeah. Three magfields and a gas giant. That's what I like. We also just constructed the orbital station uh, back home. So that is increasing our stability even higher. Uh, so our stability is really being met. If I had more money, well, I could do ground defenses. But I don't think... I'd rather have patrol HQ over ground defenses. Although ground defenses are cheaper. You know what? I don't need the stability. If I needed the stability, I would pony up for it. But I think I'd rather have the credits at the moment. I think um, making sure that I have enough credits that uh, I'm sitting on a comfortable sum is more important. I wish there wasn't a cooldown for the sensor burst. And we have reverse polarity. So I can reverse course on uh, slipstreams and do them backwards, allowing me to use slipstreams as a two-way. That one had a gamma core. Oops. It seems to me like uh, the Yays have it. I'm going to be turning back and heading to um, to aggro just to pick up a bare minimum amount of combat ships that I think can take out uh, light light battles. Let's also, you know, I've never used reverse polarity. Oh, and I have two copies of it. Let me clear that slot. So let's uh, let's use it. I'm not. Let's read this. Uh, So I can turn it on, or I can use inside slipstreams. An emergency maneuver when performed already inside the slipstream. It consumes fuel, reduces the combat readiness of all the ships, costing supplies to recover. So it's better if I reverse polarity ahead of time than to slam it uh, right before I need it. It's good to know. So plan ahead and profit. So now I'm going to turn reverse polarity off and then we can ride this slipstream back to La Galata. I feel like my home system has a weird Latin body name as a name like Medulla Oblongata, the Lunglata. So we want to pop out of the slipstream um, when we're not too, too far into it. Right about here. I wonder if the nascent gra this nascent gravity well is actually the planet that we want to be at. Uh, yeah, just about. Maybe it was the other one. So it's the second from the core, which is um, exactly where we want to go. I could, um... I could actually... Because we, we... Well, okay. I don't have, um... I don't have commerce here, so I can't actually sell directly to this colony. So I'm just going to store the stuff I don't need. For now. Oh my god. My, my toddler is making a lot of noise in the other room. Um, Alright, so let's... Uh, I do want to continue carrying... Using the shielded cargo ship. Because I think that is going to be very helpful to, to protect delicate goods. Let's call it. Um... So let's take the Eradicator, which I'm really terrible at piloting. Um, the Medusa, and then the two Enforcers. The other thing I wanted to do... Actually, I'm going to take all ships 
This is going to take me a second, but I want to strip the ships that I'm not using so that um, the best stuff is then refitted to the ships I want to use. Someday, I will have enough supplies that that might not be necessary, but that's not today. So, for my primary ship, I think we decided the Gauss Cannon is kind of where it's at. I think um, that might be better than the Molnir, and it'll keep me out of trouble. The Heavy Needler is not bad either, um, but that's a medium ballistic, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So yeah, we'll, we'll just stay, we'll, we'll leave this alone. Um, I might try with different rocket pods though. So for large missile, um, those are medium. Oh wait, no, I have medium missiles. Okay. Um, typhoons, we'll go double typhoons, which are f finishers. I don't know if this is, I mean, it's, I don't think it's a great build, but whatever, it's fine. I'm gonna auto fit the enforcers to be whatever they wanna be. I'm not gonna overthink it. They look just about identical to one another. One has flat cannons, the other has light machine guns, but very similar to one another. Uh, actually, no, 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 let's do the, um, the Eradicator first, because the Eradicator's a stronger ship. And we'll set it up as an assault full of uh, harpoon mrms which is actually going to be really really powerful that that's a that's a that's a good very good auto design mm. so i'm gonna intervene a little bit and put a dual flat cannon in the middle here whereas this has flat cannons okay so th those ships are okay. So now all the ones that I'm going to be using in the current fleet are set up for the current fleet. Um, I'll probably not be piloting the um, this ship now, but this ship is not so poorly designed that it's unusable. And then any of the ships that I stripped are going to get stored. So this is my current fleet. Um, this is mostly a missile ship, so someone with missile spec in here would be best. Uh, like Wishbringer, who has missile specialization. So we'll put him in the um, in Destroy with Roy. Um, I would say missile or ballistics for the enforcers. So we have target analysis, system expertise. That's actually not great in there. Asiac has impact, ballistics, energy. Okay, we'll put him in there. Fangface can take JD, who's got point defense, system expertise, gunnery. That works. And then the last ship would be the, the shielded cargo ship. And we'll put Febreze in there. I could also, um, it wouldn't be crazy to take some of the, um, the small harass ships, the Wolf and the Tempest, and just stick pilots in there for the, cause it's very, very, very low cost in terms of, um, fuel and, um, and supplies, and it would help them level up. So I'm going to auto fit these and stick pilots in them as well. Because at some point I'm going to want um, my f my captains to have experience. I'll do the same with... Now I feel like I'm designing a combat fleet, but I'll do the same with, um, with Renmir and Hab Joker. So that every single um, captain is deployable in combat. And, um, oops, that was the wrong person. Um, it's going to make running this fleet a lot more expensive, but I think 
at this point, it makes sense to start investing in um, captain experience so that I can actually have a bit of a combat fleet. It's it's time. So we've got this to refit. The hammerhead to refit. And that's it. And I'm just, whatever the default refits are, is fine by me. Is there a captain missing? No, there shouldn't be. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, got them all. All right. Skeleton crew. So slightly above skeleton crew. That's oh, too high. Let's go... 70, 100 more crew than we absolutely need a bare minimum. And then... Fill the fuel, and I probably don't need all the supplies. Alright, we are good to go. This is a survey fleet that I actually can do some combat. Now, I don't think I'm going to spend the time to, um... To go back to those probes, because the... The chance of them having loot is uh, that's worth anything is very low, but what it can do is go back to the survey ship, which was an Alpha Manuela, I think. Um, yeah, or in Delta Manuela. And, uh, and take it out. So, Pirate Survey Fleet. So, uh, surveys... So our current priority is survey, salvage, and f slaughter. The three S's. Although granted, slaughtering the pre-domain, uh, kind of a misnomer considering that they, uh, they're AI, they don't, they're not organic. Hold on, pit stop. Ah, oh, it's a mudskipper, I don't care. Bye mudskipper. God, reverse polarity is so nice. That is awesome. Do I have survey ships? I believe these big honkers are survey equipped. Equipped. Yeah. So I have two survey ships. If the Atlas and the Prometheus are both uh, survey ships, and I still burn at um, eighteen, you know, because we have um, navigation unlocked. So that's. It's not terrible. Whoa! I'm glad I'm not hostile with you, because I definitely got ejected out of that... Uh, out of that uh, slipstream straight at the pirate fleet. So... I think the survey ship was somewhere around there. No, maybe not. Where was uh it was a near Well there's domain probes here. It should be on my map somewhere. Oh, I might be in the wrong system. So derelict domain survey location. There is a survey ship somewhere in this sector. It's just I haven't found it yet. I have intel that I took off of a probe that there is a survey ship in this sector. It's near the plant with the other probe? Over there? Okay. I've got a bit of a goldfish memory at times. Uh, in my defense, I do have strep throat right now, so... I know it feels like, uh... And I just got over a denovirus last week? Or two weeks ago? Life has been really... Kind to me, let's say. I'm here at this probe. Let's take it out. So I'm going to give... So some some of my... um Some of my captains are already max level, so they don't really benefit from combat. So spending um, deployment points 
to level them up is not worth it. So for the level five captains, which is for these four ships, I'm not even going to bother. Because there's no benefit as long as they're max level. I wonder how the AI automatically fires Typhoon Reaper launchers. I put it on, like, AI control. Oh, so they just YOLO it. And miss. Got it. So, definitely put those on not auto-fire. Hammerhead going blammo. And we're done. Open sprocket leveled up. All right, Sprocky, where are you? You are going to gain damage control. That's useful in basically any ship. I like to design, it's maybe more min-maxed to design your, um, your captains for very specific ships, custom tailored, but because I don't have ships that I would say I'm gonna keep forever other than that um, Paragon, which I think is always gonna be useful to some degree or another, uh, I'd rather have my captains be good generalists, able to take on a little whatever I throw at them. And the service ship is there, near that uh, warp point. My easily distracted brain remember that. Oh, but let's get this probe while we're, while we're next to it. Unfortunately, uh, Hab Joker's combat readiness is sub, well, actually mine is two. Sub, um, 60. Because we just fought and I didn't give enough time for the ships to be re-readied. But we'll be fine. This will be a quick enough fight that I don't think it will matter. All the ships are like, uh, we're falling apart, Captain. Uh, I know, I know. I'm flamed out. I can't even point my ship at directions. There we go. Thank you, Tempest. Get him! Oh, that wasn't the last ship? No, oh, there's one harassing my mule, and then there's one harassing the wolf. Uh, so, Hammerhead, go assist the wolf, and then Tempest, go assist the mule. How's my throat doing? Um, it doesn't hurt to speak. I would say I probably sound a little different than normal. It hurts to swallow. Uh, so I think my strep throat is, like, deep. Not near, like, vocal cords, which is good. Good for work. And I'm already on antibiotics. Um, so my mend time from this latest illness should be quick. I, um, I started the stream half an hour late because I was at the clinic uh, getting you know, poked and prodded and measured and all that for swabbed, essentially. I knew I was at high risk of it because uh, my wife was came down with strep two days ago and my uh, toddler was likely the, uh, the disease carrier of it. Uh, and it's very hard to keep toddler spit away from you. I don't, I don't know how many of you are parents, but let me just tell you, if your toddlers have a disease, you are getting the disease. Um, so, I just leveled up. I really want to get hull restoration, so I'm going to um, spend this point somewhere in the industry tree. Uh, so let me consider. Bulk transport, probably don't need, because I have a lot of bulk transport uh, crafts already. So, very minimally useful to me at this point. Build repairs would be nice to reduce the amount of supply costs, but I already have um, way stations, so that's not so necessary. Polarized armor 
with the elite flux dissipation rate would be very nice for me to vent quickly. And then if I'm ever in a phase ship, it's even better. Containment procedures is nice for the emergency burn, no longer reduces combat readiness. So if you have to do a lot of e-burning, but I've been custom tailoring my fleet to be relatively fast, meaning that I don't have such high needs for e-burns. Um, makeship equipment is a, probably what I'm going to go with, um, which reduces my monthly sub consumption for ship maintenance down a lot. And it also lets me remote survey. And I'm really only doing this to be able to survey uh, solar systems way, way more quickly. Uh, and then I can ditch this at some point in lieu of a better, I don't know. I'll do polarized armor. Yeah, I'll just do polarized armor. Talk myself out of it. So I'm waiting. I'm, I'm just gonna sit here for a second so that my fleets can repair from the last battle and I'll jump into the next one. But I did level up, which was nice. So one point away from um, from the huge game, life-changing hull restoration, where all ships are almost always recoverable and lost in combat, so I can't lose ships, or almost never lose ships. And then ships lost in combat have a 75% chance to 90% chance to avoid demods when they're destroyed or disabled. It removes demods once per month, selected randomly, and it's faster for low DP ships, so small ships get demods removed even quicker. Um, it has a chance to quickly remove demods from newly acquired ships, and then it also increases the combat readiness for ships uh, as well. It's it's a phenomenal skill. Uh. This was a slightly larger fight, so I'm going to roll the Eradicator as well, just as a insurance policy for uh, for not actually taking losses. So all of my ships, I'm going to set as heavy escort for defending the Eradicator, and the Eradicator will lead the way. Because I, I don't what I, I don't want to have happen is the Tempest or Wolf to wander off on their own and get destroyed. Plus, this Eradicator is like a, a harpoon missile ship. Oh. Oh yeah! My Typhoon's hit! And I almost one-tapped that Bastillion. There it goes, poof. The Typhoon's when they connect, and they're a lot easier to connect against, against uh, enemy stations and enemy capital ships, because capital ships and stations are way bigger targets. When those things hit, they hit. They annihilate. Alright, what's left? Uh, we're done. Yeah, that, that eradicator for the harpoon spam is mm, chef's kiss. I like those ships. They're also um, very, very armored. They're hard to kill. So I'm just uh, trying to gain more fleet-wide combat readiness to take on the survey ship because the survey ship was a little bit more uh, defended. If you're wondering about the mods, it's the... Uh, it's the Rad Sector link there, but uh, I'm not running mods. In fact, I don't think any mods are even updated to version 0.97a, which is what I'm playing, because it came out yesterday. Could be wrong about that, but... That would be really, really fast updates. So this is a bit bigger of a fight. There's two Berserkers. Berserkers aren't that hard to kill. Uh, but I don't I don't want to run um, I'm gonna spend the, the the supplies to deploy all of my combat ships for this one and then likewise just like last time I'm gonna have everyone be a heavy defense regimen uh, protecting the um, the eradicator so that nobody wanders off And if I can, try to line up Typhoon shots on the Berserkers that would... Oh, wow. Those Harpoons just murked. Oh, I got flamed out. That's not good. Help!
Here, engines are online. Good. There we go. The eradicator actually helped me. As you can see, the AI-controlled harpoons are just, like, not accurate. There we go. That's both berserkers down, so the rest of this fleet is kind of chump change. I'm getting, like, gun spammed here, so I'm gonna fall back into, uh... In fact, with, um, the stronger targets all dead, I could probably just do full assault now. And not worry too much about losing ships. Because they don't really, have, I mean, they have a, a Bastillion, but that's like their biggest ship that's left, which is not much. Whoa! Almost friendly fire there! There we go. Boom. That connected. That was fun to watch. All right, so that was a survey ship. A lot of gamma cores in that. Um, uh, pretty decent experience. And a location of a mothership, which might be too hard for me to take on, but I could always investigate it and and see for myself. And also, like a pretty good salvage. You know, we have um, twelve hundred medals and some some weapons. A lot of gamma cores. So where is that survey ship? Mothership, rather. Uh, the mothership is really freaking far away, so that's probably not something I'm gonna go chase down just yet. It's, uh... It ain't convenient. Let's go ahead and continue surveying. Did any of my captains level up? Nah. The, the, the combat threat scales where... Whoa, what the hell? Uh, that's got to be uh, uh, sensor glitches. Uh, the combat threats scale so that the more outnumbered you are, the more experience you get. And I haven't been taking huge risks, to be honest. But maybe at some point. So no nice planets here. Oh, uh, but some gas giants that I can scan for topographical information. Maybe some mag fields as well. If I'm lucky, a ruin or two. Yeah, I usually end up dropping metals just because they're not worth much. You're right. So, so far, nobody really cares that I'm farming. I'm not farming enough volume to threaten the um, the pro production of other colonies. So I'm I'm off the radar, which is good. I don't know who controls the galaxy's plurality and majority share of farming, but whoever does will eventually probably get pissed if I continue farming. Uh, if I set up more farms, that is. But the game is uh, provides that kind of information for you. So what it will say is it will be like, you have a world that is size 5 or greater, and Agriville actually just leveled up to size 4. Colony size 4. So you have a... You have a um, you know, a world that is size, you know, five or greater, and you're producing too many commodities, so as a result of the commodities that you're producing, you are gaining the attraction of this faction. Um, so, for instance, here's a perfect example. The Ludic Path now is interested in uh, Agraville as a potential target for their terror campaigns. So if I look at colony crises, 
Um, the Ludic Path. Oh, oh, and here, Tritac. Tritac is upset that I am producing nine food. And the only way to stay off their radar is to produce four or fewer, which there's not even, I can't even do that. I would have to shut down facilities entirely. Um, and what ends up happening is once I hit the critical threshold of 250, or rather, once I hit the threshold of 200, um, some sort of attack will be launched against me. So whether it's pirates, Ludic Path, Tritac, or Ludic Church, uh, it will pick one of those as a threat to me that I will have to um, bribe or fight or defend or whoever, you know, and, and that's the way it works. And it's it's different even in this patch than last one that was like three days ago. And actually it benefits me. It used to be that, um, that like pirates always... Uh, provide uh always sort of like threatened you and, and now that's no longer true you can definitely not have pirate threat the pirates are not yet positive to me i haven't really been doing pirate missions for them but they're not hostile either they are uh negative 17 so they're suspicious but um which doesn't necessarily mean they're going to leave my um colonies alone they're just not going to actively open fire on me in open space It's also worth noting that um, the sort of random missions that you get offered on the mission board uh, here, these sort of missions, um, can only bring you up to 50 rep. With the pirates, going above that would require contacts. It requires you to do missions for specific people. So you can't just do generic, like, survey a planet missions to get up to welcoming. You, you actually have to... Um, build up pirate contacts and do smuggling and dead drops and that kind of thing. It's the only way to get up to welcoming, which is the highest rep level. And I don't know exactly what was included in the patch, but what I did read is that there was more black market and bar type um, activities in this update than ever before. I just haven't found them yet, so I don't know what they are or what to look for. Ooh, that's a neutron star. Blast. Uh, let's fly through it. Flying through it is actually cheaper than flying around it, where it will blast you with the radiation. So there was a point of interest here. Yeah, I went out of my way for a kite ship. No thanks. You can also hide from the blast by putting. Oh, what's this? It's just debris. By putting a planet between you and the neutron, it will shield you. Using it as a wall of sorts. Planet size wall. A lot of mag fields here. I think I scanned both mag fields at once, but I'll just double check. Yep, I did. Time to get out before I get blasted. So after the next two star systems here, I'm going to have you guys uh, vote what to do next. Pirate missions, academy missions, or survey and salvage. Continuing the survey and salvage. Be up to you. Okay, that fleet scared me for a second. It was a giant pirate fleet, but they weren't after me. Uh, and I think there's a pirate base somewhere on this um, 
in the solar system because the comms and the stability are owned by them. Maybe somewhere in this asteroid belt or near the other planet. Which is actually a pretty good... Um, I could I could dump my metals and stuff to their markets. I think I think they're orbiting this planet. Yep. Cool. I'll even sell my gamma cores on open market. Um, and I'll I'll resupply. I love being friendly enough with the pirates that I can just be like, yeah. Hostile pirate base. Um, this pirate base is probably raiding core worlds, and here I am trading with it. Uh, you want me to deploy a spy package uh, near the core worlds. So I see that you guys have pirate missions as like kind of the thing to work on next, but I'm. Um, it hasn't, you know, I'll, I'll continue doing the survey for now. But I'm a little tempted to pick up that mission anyway. How many days does it give me? Doesn't say. I think it's usually 120 days. Yeah, 120 days. So I'll accept it. Because I'll easily be able to do that within 120. So I'm almost done surveying. Is no thirteen light years because there's a blue supergiant here which could have those um, the shunts the it only blue or blue supergiants blue giants or blue supergiants can have those shunts but I'm too far from Agraville to benefit from them. You know, one thing I hadn't noticed is um, the survey cost for... Oh, yeah, see? In addition, your fleet carries specialized survey equipment that reduces survey requirements as follows. 80 fewer supplies to perform a survey. So, like, surveying this planet costs five supplies? Holy hell, is that a bonus. Like... <laughs> it would cost 85 and it cost me five? Like... My lord, I could be surveying everything. Oh, this might be a shunt. Nope, just a probe. Guarded probe. So we are inside a corona of the of the uh, blue supergiant. So our ships are, like, falling apart super, super fast. So the faster we can wrap up this fight, the better, because nobody wants to fight in the corona of a star. Really? T automatic Typhoon launcher? Like, you took that shot? Are you kidding me? At least you hit that one. Now you should fire. I have, like, there it goes. Thank you. At some point, if the fights were hard enough, I would micromanage my Typhoon launchers so that they don't take stupid shots. Um, just these fights are easy enough that it doesn't really matter. So there goes the Bastillions. There's one more Bastillion left and then everything else is like small, small fry ships. Oh, they flamed me. Ha! <laughs> Even a flame out, I landed a hit on that, uh, that little ship there and, and shocked it. Alright, if we don't wrap this up soon, my own ships are gonna suffer some 
real critical problems. So we gotta wrap this up. I think this is the second to last ship. So you two, and you, go for that, and you guys go for that. Unfortunately, the, um, the AI-controlled ships, these guys that I'm fighting, don't ever retreat. They fight until they're gone. And there we go. Okay, we're done. Thank goodness. Nice. I leveled up a quarter of the... what I need. Thank you for tuning in to Star Sector Scrappy Privateer, which originally streamed live on Twitch February 3rd and February 4th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but please keep in mind that this is a series from a marathon stream, meaning that changes cannot be made to the series. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Radamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, a link can be found in the description of this video or also at Radamont.com. Additionally, in the description of this video is a link to the details about this series, if you're wondering about the scenario series rules or goals. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow privateers.